Hello, friends. I'm Dee, about to react to this last of it. It's titled The Disturbing Truth Behind Jay-Z and Beyonce. I want to hear what, what this disturbing truth is because I feel like people were just throwing stuff out there saying, oh, Illuminati, you know, ain't doing stuff. No, Diddy. But y'all not really saying specifically what, you know, y'all are accusing these people of, you know, aside from those ridiculous claims of they have something to do with Aaliyah, her passing, and Michael Jackson. <laughs> aside from the stupid stuff, give us some concrete uh, tea. You know, what, what, what's really going on? What's the disturbing truth? Let's hear what you have to say, let's watch. The rap world is undergoing a reckoning at the moment, as everyone is looking at the dark secrets that are spilling out. With the news that Diddy might be going away for life, People are now questioning oh, who else might be in line to have their private lives not, exposed not, and the terrible things that they've done to not, others coming to light and potentially wow. ruining their reputation. And at the moment, it's not just one individual under scrutiny, but it's rap's real power couple who are being placed under the microscope Somebody as they are now facing accusations that range from behind the scenes political uh, manipulation to even murder. It's your boy Luesta, and this is the disturbing Thank alleged the life of Jay-Z and Beyonce. During a recent interview with Piers Morgan, R&B singer and conspiracy theorist Jaguar Wright Singer? What was she saying? Although she had been brought on the show to discuss the diddler and how she had been calling him out for years, she went majorly off script and started talking about Hove and the former Destiny's Child singer turned megastar. Oh, why there's no vindication for me? Because for four years, I've been screaming, not just Diddy, but Diddy and Jay-Z are monsters and the victim-making machine kept going on. When Pierce pointed out that Hope hadn't responded to all the rumors going around about their friendship after Diddy's arrest, Wright claimed that Jay's underhanded tactics and sneaky ways of avoiding direct involvement have allowed him to stay on top of the industry. That's what he does. He starts little fires everywhere, forces everyone involved to go and carry water while he sneaks away without a response. That change is now, Sean. You must respond. Rather than say he was just an accomplice to evil, she said that in reality, Jay was the connective tissue between many of the big names who have been involved in horrific acts. Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey Epstein, Robert Kelly, Sean Combs have one person in common, Sean Carter. This has been a fist of tyranny that has been punching through our culture and our society for decades. It must stop. She even claimed that there are people ready to come forward with their stories, adding fuel to a conspiracy theory that's recently gained a lot of attention. One involving their alleged connection to the tragic death of another prominent R&B artist. I have three victims right now who are willing to give testimony about not only what Mr. Carter has done to them, but his wife as well. They're a nasty little couple. They do nasty things. Keeping people against their will, putting people on planes while they're unconscious. Just like Aaliyah got on that plane. Oh, uh, she started now, that rumor? If you were looking for that portion oh, of her interview with the British journalist anywhere else on YouTube, you wouldn't find it. Because after she made those comments, Morgan got hit with a cease and desist and was made yeah. to censor his allegedly uncensored show. Well, Jay, you were right, unexpectedly made several serious allegations about Jay-Z and Beyonce during that interview. As I said in the moment, they were not present to respond or defend themselves, but now they have. Their lawyers contacted us to say that those claims were totally false and have no basis in fact, and we've therefore complied with the legal request to cut them from the original interview. Editing, in, editing interviews is not something we do lightly at a show called Uncensored, like the proverbial cries of fire in a crowded theatre. There are legal limits on us too. And we apologise to Jay-Z. Ambience. After it was pulled from air and Morgan had this tail between his legs, their lawyer Alex Spiro labeled the claim as clearly false. There's rumors and then there's nonsense. And this is one step further, he told TMZ. This is a pointed and formal accusation of something. I felt it needed to be responded to. I think somebody reported it was a cease and desist. It wasn't that. It was quite bluntly an ultimatum, which is to remove that false accusation that's demonstrably false or a court is going to order you to. So I think he made the wise choice and acted accordingly. Oh. Some people agree with their legal like team that. that you couldn't just make claims like this without any consequences. But there were some who felt that this made Jay-Z and Beyonce look way more guilty than they would otherwise, and maybe okay. the damage had been done. Where there's smoke, there's fire. It's too late to edit it out. The internet lives forever. And I mean, they're right. Once you put something onto social media, it takes on a new life of its own. And these days, sure, there's a lot of people who are wondering now if Jay-Z and Beyonce just weren't just up, in cahoots with Puff, but were nonsense. just as bad as the diddler himself. 
Because even after the threats of legal action from Jay and Bay's legal team, Jaguar continued yeah. to argue that if Diddy was brought to justice, they would be too. That's always been my focus. They're one and the same. Tell me something. When you have a peanut butter jelly sandwich, if it's just peanut butter, it's just peanut butter. If it's just jelly, it's jelly. When you put it together, it become a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and, and the taste is undeniable. Girl, I'm mm. saying Diddy and Jay-Z is peanut butter, peanut jelly butter and jelly. Let's deal with the sandwich. As opposed to jumping on the bandwagon, it should be noted that this is definitely the first time that she leveled these claims at Hope and Co. Instead, Jaguar, who sang backing vocals on Jay-Z's Unplugged album, has been claiming that Hove abused her and others for years. Tom Carter is just as bad as the Diddler, and I know that for a fact. I got the scars to prove it. I know what a box cutter feels like going into your skin and dripping you. I can tell you how it feels. Y'all ain't seen it. That Cassie shit, that's nothing. Are you trying to say like Jay-Z mm -hmm. put hands on you? I'm saying Sean Carter remembers everything he did to me and he's got it on too. Just like Diddy. It's gonna be the woman that get him in the end. You know, I'm not saying that she is lying about everything. Some of the things she says though sounds a bit crazy okay but just looking at her i know mental illness when i see it <laughs> i know mental instability when i see it so this might be the cause of you know what she's gone through in the industry maybe people did you know abuse her and you know do these crazy things to her which caused her to be a bit mentally unstable but some some is off you know you could just listen to her talk look her in the eyes and you could just tell something something's up and i saw a clip of her talking to orlando i'm gonna say bloom that ain't his name orlando the the other crazy one and just look it up if you have any question <laughs> about her mental state just look it up they both Looked batshit crazy in that interview. They're singing and just it's giving drugs or just again mental illness. It was something something's off. So it's like I'm I'm not saying that this is all false, but it's just difficult to you know take it seriously sometimes when I'm looking in the face of crazy. Is all I'm saying. Of course, and there I know are crazy. some people who would discredit Jaguar right. Throughout the years, she has shown signs of instability, such as throwing her son's ashes at people during an argument before. Hello, what did I just say? <laughs> Mirroring them on her own skin. Oh, my dear son. Oh, my dear son. Oh, my son. They're all dead. No, they're all dead. No, they're all dead. Okay, this is worse than I fucking thought. Why has nobody shown this clip of all the damn videos I've watched where they've mentioned her and try to make it seem like, oh, she's this credible. You know, witness, nobody has ever wanted to play this clip. Nobody has found it and wanted to show it to give us the full picture. Again, I'm not saying she's lying about everything. There can very well be some validity in what she's saying, all right? Because she's been accusing Diddy for a long time, and look what ended up coming out. So I am not trying to discredit her in any way, but, <laughs> but we have to keep these things in mind. What the fuck is this? You smearing your dead son's ashes on your face? This is, this is kind of demonic, low-key. This looks very scary to me. The fuck? They're all dead. Who is dead? They're all dead. But as hard as that is to accept, oh she has been proven right in other ways. From Diddy's secret freakouts, right down to the ingredients of the cocktail that Diddy used to sedate the participants horse in these events. It's a veterinary drug. It's a horse tranquilizer. Now, gay men have been using this for years. If you went to a gay party or a gay rave, there were certain drugs that you would always find on hand. Viagra, Special K, and cocaine. But as headline grabbing as what she has to say is, Wright is ultimately only one voice in the crowd of people who have suggested that there's something seriously warped going on behind the scenes in Ho's life. Right down to fellow 90s hip hop artists like Lord Jamar. Ooh. According to him, Ho's indiscretions were a lot better disguised than Diddy's. But the fact that he started dating Beyonce after meeting her when she was just 17 years old, as well as rumors that he got with Foxy Brown when the rapper was 15 and he was 27, should have rang alarm bells. You know, I I will say that Jay Z, yeah, well, if he was doing Ill he? Sh like that, he was more quiet about it. You know what I mean? But then, if we be real with ourselves, it was kind of abnormal when he got with Beyonce. Like she was pretty young when he got with her. There's rumors that he was messing with Foxy Brown when she was pretty young. 
you know, so there's a lot of those rumors around. But if you ask Jamar, the situation is scarily common when it comes to these high power celebrities. And Jay is he just one 40, of many 30. people that he had heard some Jay -Z things about. Is... You know, I'm not gonna lie. When certain people get to a certain level of fame, I don't know why, but you start to hear little sh about certain people sometimes. If you really think about most of your top celebrities, oh, black celebrities, crazy. rappers, I feel like I've heard a rumor damn near about all of them. It could be. Or it could be that mother has got to join a club in order to get to a certain level. Everybody that goes past a certain point, Oh, no, she's 43. Hear, he's 54. So he's 11 Jay years older. Yup. The whole Foxy Brown so situation has had people concerned for a long time. Even when she appeared on his debut album in 1996, That's the track true. was recorded two years earlier. When she, I didn't know that. I knew he was older, but I don't know why I thought it was like a few years, like maybe four or something. I mean, that still would have been bad. But 17 and 28, that's wild. Why did people let this happen? was just 15. Then, as her first album emerged when she was 17, it was full of really explicit lyrics and had five co-writing credits for, you guessed it, Sean Carter. So at this point, Hope and Foxy's relationship seems to be an open secret. Even Jason Lee hinted towards it on a recent IG Live after Puffy's arrest. And then Diddy, that whole empire crumbling got a lot of y'all scared because your favorite rapper was sleeping with a 15 year old. But listen, here's the deal. But when it comes to Jay's questionable behavior around young women, it doesn't end with those he tries to court. Sometimes he's threatening teenagers just to get their signature on a contract. During an appearance on Tyra Banks' show way back in the day, a 17-year-old Rihanna let it slip that Jay had been a little forceful in convincing her to sign to Def Jam back when he was still at the helm of the label. Like that, that's who is the lead here. I look through the door with the deal sign or through this window and we're on the 29th floor. This may have Girl, seemed like a lighthearted anecdote from Riri no, at the time, but considering, considering everything we now know about how the top figures in hip hop operate, it lands a little differently. Particularly when you hear some of the stories about how Jay and Bay have allegedly moved through both the industry and their own secretive lives. The name Kathy Coriana White might not necessarily mean anything to you, but for those who are familiar with the dirt surrounding the Carters, she's one of the most interesting individuals in the whole situation. It was alleged that back yeah, in the day, Kathy and Jay-Z were engaged in an affair. Eventually, the press got wind of it and tried to follow up, but then something horrible happened before the truth could come out. The story comes from former entertainment reporter Liz Crockett, who said that she was on the cusp of blowing the whole thing wide open when tragedy struck. In August of 2011, I was working as a senior editor editor for Star Magazine. My boss asked me to look into Star, all that that one reports claiming that a magazine. woman named Kathy Coriana White, who friends called Cory, was having an affair with Jay-Z. The blog that reportedly first broke the affair story was published by Hollywood Street King in an article titled Busted. Jay-Z caught cheating on Beyonce with Kathy White in August of 2010. I managed to get a hold of Kathy at her job in New York over the phone. I then uncovered photos of Kathy hanging out with Jay-Z and Diddy at Tao Nightclub in Las Vegas. So I called her back and asked her about the photo evidence that debunked her initial claim that she had never met or hung out with Jay-Z. At this point, Kathy expressed to me that she would consider going public with her store. Days later, I tried to reach her at her work with no luck. I finally got a hold of one of her colleagues and I asked her if she knew why Kathy had been MIA. Her colleague shockingly told me she's dead. This story has gained what plenty of attention like over the years, RP, even that. becoming the focus of a full video by Trap Lord Ross. Yeah, 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 I watched that. that oh, there might God. be more beneath the surface than we initially I watched thought. One video about but it. her friend and that. colleague Claudia Jordan has pushed back and has since tried to dent the story. Still, it continues to grow arms and legs, with people even theorizing that Ye hinted towards the situation between White and Jay Z on the infamous track of Blood on the Leaves when like he said, song. "You only want to see that ass in reverse. Two thousand dollar bag with no cash in your purse." Now you sit in core side, wifey on the other side. Gotta keep them separated. I call that apartheid. Then she says she's pregnant. That's the night your heart died. Now you gotta go to your girl and report that. Main reason, cause your pastor said he can't afford that. Obviously, Ye and Kanye have a complex relationship that could be deserving of its own video one day. But it wouldn't exactly be the first time that he blew the whistle on his former mentor and said more than he should have. Because when they had fallen out in the past, Ye seemed to suggest that there was more reasons to be afraid of Hove. I've been sent here to give y'all my truth, even at the risk of my own life, even at the risk of my own success, my own career. JC, call me, bro. You should be able to call me. 
Jay-Z. Jay-Z, Paul, Jay-Z, I know you're dead, killers. Please don't sit them at my head. Just call me. Talk to me like a man. Much like Jaguar White, Ye is a man who the media has also labeled as crazy from time to time. So this pretty much went under the radar. But some believe he, he also might have been guilty. Honest. He snitched on himself in music. Since Kathy time. White isn't the only person in their circle to have mysteriously and suddenly passed away. The plane crash that killed a rising star in the world of music and film. Reaction today after Aaliyah and eight others were killed when their plane went down. The tragic death of Aaliyah is one that's grown very shadowy in recent years. For starters, it's recently emerged that the beloved singer wasn't even conscious when she boarded the plane that crashed and claimed her life. They took her out of the van. She didn't even know she was getting boarded on a plane. She went on the plane asleep. And one person who's become increasingly wary of the official story is Dame Dash. To many people, he's the original hater when it comes to Hope, incapable of accepting what went wrong with their friendship at Rockefeller Records. But to many people, he's been seen as the man who was right about Hope all along. In case you didn't know, Dame was dating Aaliyah at the time of her untimely death. But that happened long after Hove had been trying to date her since she was 17. Whereas Dame didn't start dating her until she was 21. I didn't look at her like that because she was like a tomboy. She was little to me. But then one time, I, uh, she was, uh, I guess we had the same bookkeeper. And I walked past. And the thing about Aaliyah was like, every time I saw her, she looked different. So she had different looks every time. And I was like, who the fuck is that? According to Dame, this was something that stayed with Jay long after his former friend and label co-owner hooked up with her. And was the cause of some friction between them. Everybody knows that shit. Oh. And we were both like, we were both. I heard it, but I didn't. Yeah, I didn't, well, they be trying to act like he was like really fucking with her. He was sending flowers and doing all the shit that nigga. He was courting her. So we were both going on. And we, right. and we ended up in the same house for 4th of July. So we were, for some reason, this, this day. Wait a minute, you, Jay, and Aaliyah ended up in the same house? Yeah. That's funny. Uh, so it was like one day it might lean toward him and lean toward me. But I was just I was just on fire that week. Like I was just <laughs> everything I was saying was funny, you know what I'm saying? It was like and I remember coming downstairs like you know, it happened. He was like <sighs> <laughs> so, you know, this is gonna be hard for me because he was like, because he was throwing, because he was, you know, because like, you know, his friends were laughing at him. But there was a third man involved mm. in the situation the individual who had groomed her and married her when she was just 14, R. Kelly. Despite how sick this was and how much Kelly's behavior was an open secret in the game, Jay went ahead and made two collaborative projects with him. Mm, Meanwhile, Dame refused to take a dime. Those albums were crazy. I don't want to be a part of that, so I'm not working with you. That's so I walked away from one stand and the homie was, did do business with him. When it came down to R. Kelly, there was a conversation had about the moralness, like it's morally wrong to do a project with someone that we know raped my girl or raped anybody for that matter. So I do know that that conversation was had and I was really surprised that he moved forward with that relationship. I, I don't know Epstein so I never had the chance to walk away from him but I do know that when that project did come out I didn't want any part of that project. I didn't want any of the money to go to Rockefeller or me when it came to Rockefeller. It was around the time that Jay was trying to kind of separate himself from us and he was saying that he didn't want to be a part anymore. The idea that Hove must have known was echoed by Nas who seemed to have suggested something similar at the height of his beat. You have songs with him too though. Trust me, trust me, trust me, in the years that have passed since Aaliyah's tragic death, Dame has increasingly wondered if someone had something to gain from her passing away. And in recent years, people have felt that Jay and Beyonce are among those who might have had a hand in it, or at least had something to gain from her passing, including Jaguar White. By the way, wasn't this all around the time when Aaliyah died? Yeah. And Beyonce's solo career was struggling? Damn on your horn now, that fucking bullshit ass record. Mm. From the Austin Powers shit was some of the worst shit out. They were having a hard time taking her solo, and then Aaliyah died. While Dame has never explicitly said that Hove was the man involved, mm. he has basically said that it's now up to <laughs> Wait, this sounds really ridiculous initially, but the more they breaking it down, I'm like, oh shit, I didn't know I didn't know these details of these things. I'm not saying it happened, but it's like, oh wait, they putting the pieces together a little better. 
Hawk's former friends and others to make it clear that there's no foul play. I know that there are people that benefited from her death, but I, I, it, for me, when I hear these conspiracies, I'm oh, like, they, how could they be that powerful that they could get a plane or someone to crash a plane? Like, I, I don't want to say I, I, I'm underestimating people, but I don't oh, give people, saying. like, that would be, that's like, yo, that's the most illest gangster shit, some Pablo Escobar, you could actually get a plane to crash. And then a lot of rumors about me, like I sacrificed her and some dumb shit like that, you know, all those things. It, it, it's hard to, I don't want to believe that, but it does make me think it through, you know? So again, in this moment, just because there's so much gray area on a legal level, not what I'm suspecting, but like, you know, this shit is now real. Or if it isn't real, people are going to have to prove that it's not real. But he hasn't shied away from making some pretty wild claims about Hope that echo some things that you might have been hearing about Diddy. During a particularly shocking interview, Dame Dash alleged that Jay followed in Diddy's footsteps and spiked his drinks after a show. There was this one time when my daughter was 16, uh, Jay had a show and my daughter wanted to go. So I'm like, yo, I'm not going to deprive my daughter. So, you know, I hollered at Jay, sent the kite and told him I wanted to go to a show with my daughter. And they accommodated me, it accommodated me to the fullest. People were really surprised to see me there, took pictures with everybody. And, and again, Emery's my brother, so I would hate to think that he was fucking around like that. Pause. But he kept asking me something. That was the first time I had tasted that douce. And I got ridiculously drunk to the extent, and my daughter and I were talking about this the other day, that I was like, yo, I don't get this drunk. Why am I so drunk? And I ended up wrestling with with Kevin Hart, he pulled me and got me a chicken wing. And I remember uh, Vaughn taping that shit. I'm like, yo, why you taping, Vaughn? So I'm thinking, I'm like, damn, because homie makes drinks too. And, and, and again, just if this is true, these are the things that I'm like, just reflecting on. And if, like, if, if I wouldn't have played everything completely by the book, complete honor, then I could have been compromised. For the most part, mm -hmm. we've been focusing on Jay-Z. In a lot of ways, it makes sense that he's the one who's been on the front lines of the industry for almost 30 years, pulling strings and hustling his way to a billion dollars. Generally, you don't get that rich without getting your hands a little dirty. Mm, so, true. does Beyonce have similar skeletons in her closet? Well, these days, people are beginning to think so. Recently, the video of Kanye's VMA escapade with Taylor Swift has been doing the rounds again on social media. Oh, but okay. instead of the usual narratives about him stealing a young girl's thunder, people are now suggesting that he actively saved Taylor. Because the theory goes that if she hadn't given what? Beyonce any credit, it could have gone south for her. Check what? this out. Beyonce, who? She knows. You changed my life. You, you sang that gospel medley, and the way you made me feel, I was like, I want to make yeah, people feel this with my music. So thank like you it. so much. You clearly are the artist of our lives. So Beyonce, thank you to Beyonce. I love like like this Beyonce. This album for me, appreciate that. All us artists here, we fucking adore you. You are our light. And I love you. I always have, and I always will. Oh, and Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. For EA fans, this whole scenario That's has been a real layup <laughs> as it means that people are posting positive comments about her for a change. But even if there's nothing to really substantiate that theory, it doesn't change the fact that she has lost 4 million followers since March 2024. If you're keeping tabs, really? that's around the same time that things started to get wild with yeah, Diddy's case. And just as Jaguar White has been going at Hove, there are people inside Beyonce's inner circle who have suggested that there's darkness underneath the surface there as well. Identifying himself as her former bodyguard, that don't even look like him. Goes by the name of Uncle Ron, this has started sharing some wild stories about Beyonce. This and is Hove, not like the same. Only for those TikToks to also be taken down. For one thing, he said that she had a pretty severe addiction, and this was for Hove's benefit. See, hardly nobody knows, but I say, man, yeah, Beyonce is on drugs. She been on them for a long time, and you keep her that way. Y'all wish it what you wish it to stay on top, but there's one thing about me, bro. I can't be bought. In a separate video, he threatened to expose them, claiming that they might take a drastic action to silence him with the kind of dirt he had on them, including but not limited to them ending other R&B singers' careers and even their relationship being a sham. Beyonce and Jay-Z will do anything to destroy anyone who speaks out against them. Hey, I get the threats, but you have to remember one thing. I know your deepest secrets. I know so much about you and what you've done. I know so much on how you got what you are, how you stepped on many people. 
Beyonce, how you guys ended Carrie Hilson's career because she said something about you. That's how hateful you guys are. How you step on anybody to stay on the top. To remember, your relationship was a business relationship. Financial Sorry, I'm to get sick. to the top. To be, be, so to be start changing. There's no love there. From there, Uncle Ron continued, claiming that he would draw <coughs> evidence if they ever challenged him. Remember, all the receipts, all the proof, the old school footage, I still have it. Now, it's hard to validate if a lot of what he's saying is fact, but there are comments from Carrie Hilson from years ago where she tries to explain why she disappeared from the music industry for seven years after shading Beyonce on the track, Turn It On. Although she didn't go too much into detail, it's clear that there were repercussions for that. It's the price you pay, you know, when, you know, when you're early in your career, you feel that you have to listen. And when you buck, they buck harder and they make threats and those threats are huge ones and you 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 know what i mean you don't you don't feel like you have a choice i really didn't feel like i had a choice it was do this or this will happen and i'm young i'm early 20s and i'm like uh I, they're like sing this song you don't have a, you know you're here for a couple hours to the town it's that it's the whole if you don't then blank so you you I learn like though you learn to fight harder i didn't have um, enough fight in me in my uh, I was maybe 20, 21 and I have enough fight in me. But the whole thing gets even crazier because unfortunately just months after unveiling his TikToks about Jay and Beyonce Uncle Ron's family would take to his TikTok to announce that he had passed away. Let's make this clear. No one is saying that Hov and Beyonce did anything. After all he could have died of natural causes but when you consider everything that's emerged as of late you can bet that this shirt is going to wild. stop the conspiracy theories <laughs> And who knows, Probably not if any of this though. is true, they might end up in a cell right alongside Diddy. If you didn't know by now, hip-hop is full of wild conspiracy theories. And if you want to get more acquainted with more of them... No, that's wild. He did? Is he really dead? Because sometimes people will just come out for cloud and pretend that they're associated with a certain person and be like, oh, I'm trying to speak for them. Is he really dead? Is it his real family saying he died? That's crazy. Or maybe they're scared, so they want to pretend that he died because they don't want... You know, no heat, or maybe he really did die. My problem with that whole situation, though, is the picture that they showed of the bodyguard, it don't look like that man. And obviously, he is a lot older, but there should be some, <laughs> some similarities there. It looks like a whole different man. So I'm really confused by that, but sure. Uh, yeah, this is wild. I don't know what to think of it. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know these people. I don't know what's happening. You know, anything is possible. It's very, you know, uh, it's very possible that this stuff happens. You know, at first I was like, it's responsible for, you know, Aaliyah dying. That's a reach. Y'all just saying anything. But it's like, oh, when they broke it down like this, you just never know. Now, the Michael Jackson part, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Because where is the correlation? Like, why would, what? And she was a child. Anyway, um, but I don't know. I don't know what to believe. Y'all let me know what y'all think, though. Let me know what other videos you've been watching. I'll see y'all the next time. Thanks.